Well, have you thought about how long you want to live for and the lengths you're prepared to go to to stay young? Perhaps ice baths are your thing or gene therapy. What about daily cryotherapy or hyperbaric oxygen therapy? Yeah, well, these are all techniques the Don't Die longevity movement is promoting with a growing number of Australian devotees. But is it actually possible to slow the process of ageing? For more, we're joined by Professor Luigi Fontana, longevity expert at the University of Sydney. Good morning to you, Luigi. How are you going? I'm fine. Thank you for having me. Not at all. Now, US tech billionaire Brian Johnson has pioneered this don't die movement. What are the lengths that some people are going to to stay young? Well, I think you know, there is a lot of hype out there you know, about this and the signs supporting some of the interventions that him and other people are claiming they are extending longevity are not scientifically supported. Even if we know that, you know, my lab and other lab around the world, they are showing that aging can be slowed. It cannot be stopped, but it can be slowed. OK, well, I'm definitely going to ask you about that in, in just a moment. But can you see whilst what some of these people are doing aren't necessarily scientifically backed? Can you can you see the appeal of the movement? Absolutely. Ab absolutely. There is a lot of appealing. Of course, you know, everybody wants to live longer. Uh, and to be honest, you know, we double lifespan in the last 150 years. The average lifespan in 1850 was 45. And now in Australia is approximately 80 for men, 84 for women and mm. growing. So no doubt, you know, science is uh, really making a big change in life expectancy. What we need to do now is to increase health span more than life span. Yeah, well, I'll ask you about that in a moment. So is this all in vain, what some of these people are doing? I mean, is it predetermined by your genetics, by your DNA, um, that, you know, you're really only going to last a certain period of time? Well, look, you know, the, 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 the data on identical twins uh, clearly show that only 25% or less of our probability of living a longer or shorter life is due to genes. 75% is due to environmental factors that, you know, we are studying. And definitely diet and exercise have been shown in multiple uh, experimental models to extend lifespan up to 50%. It's like if, if, if human beings that are living 80 years will live 130, 140 in good health. So definitely we have data that aging can be modulated by, uh, in, by lifestyle factors. Okay, what are some of those lifestyle factors? You say that you know 75% is environment, environmental here. We can't stop aging, but we can slow it down. What are your tips for slowing it down? Does, I know you've done work into you know, calorie controlled diets. What, what, what do you suggest? Yeah, so far, you know, what we discussed, what, what we found that, you know, there are certain nutrient sensing pathways like the IGF-1 and TOR pathway that is very well characterized that can slow the accumulation of damage and definitely, definitely diet is extremely important. So eating less, stay lean, but with all the minerals and vitamins and phytochemicals, otherwise, you know, you get malnutrition that is slowing, is, is killing you, is, is causing damage. Uh, and then exercise is also acting, if, you, if it's done properly, is also acting on some of these uh, longevity pathways. Uh, and then, you know, we know that stress and uh, sleep are also acting on some of these pathways. So it's, it's, a, it's a number of interventions that are precisely modulating some of these, again, cellular pathways called nutrient sensing pathways mm. that uh, we know are extremely important because we've done a lot of experiments in animals and now in humans. We know that a lot of the, uh, these people who subscribe to the, to the don't die or, or similar um, ideas and movements uh, often get their blood tested. What do you look for in that? How can that help you preserve your age? Look, you know, what we are trying to find is a way to measure biological age. Uh, now we are developing some of these DNA methylation clocks. So basically our genes can tra get transcribed in different ways. Think about your neuron and uh, a cell from your skin has the same DNA, but they are different because the part of the DNA that get transcribed are different. And so what we found is that basically aging is also regulated by these epigenetic changes and 
we are getting better to measure these uh, biological age by using these DNA methylation clocks. We are not there yet, but we are getting close and closer, you know, to uh, measuring. So in the, in the near future, what I can foresee is that someone that is doing something that is basically, for example, like, you know, these people, they are claiming, you know, you do a cold bath, you know, and you live longer, we're going to be able to measure it because right now there is no evidence that, you know, many of the things, you know, that Byron Johnson is uh, uh, describing as anti-aging, mm. they can really slow aging. It's just wishful thinking for now. There mm. is no scientific evidence for many of those stuff. Well, Luigi, as the expert, if we can conclude on, I'd like to get your tips, if you wouldn't mind sharing. How do you live your life? Are there certain things that you're doing because you're an expert in this field um, that you think will help you stay, stay younger for longer? Yeah, so the message is that definitely, you know, we can drastically reduce our risk of developing chronic diseases and, and, and therefore living healthier and most likely a longer life. To do that, you know, you have to really avoid, you know, to gain central weight waistline and, in, and and maintain your muscle mass by doing a combination of endurance and resistance exercise. The best diet is basically a Mediterranean-like diet or Okinawa-like diet that is rich in uh, uh, um, whole, basically um, fiber rich uh, carbohydrates, not refined by carbohydrates, vegetable, fruits, fish, very little meat and um, and a few other interventions that you know basically that are like sleep you know having a, a good uh, night sleep and uh, and uh, and reduce your stress all these interventions is, is of course it's very difficult to summarize in in no, a minute of course, you know the signs but you know we know that these intervention are acting on some of the most important longevity pathways. Yeah. And, and therefore, you know, the good message is that, again, 75% of our probability of living a long and healthy life is in our hands. The environment, yeah. And maybe the old ice bath every now and then. Uh, Luigi Fontana, thank you so much for joining us here on Weekend Breakfast. You're welcome. Thank you for having me.